Hello, I'm the Lazy Critic, and currently I'm a jumble of emotions in today's COVID-19 atmosphere. I'm having a really hard time navigating these waters, and I can't help but feel like a failure. With COVID-19 raging forward, I like to movies like Meet the Robinsons to make me feel better. The hardships that have come from COVID-19 are devastating, and I feel a lot of the dread that comes along with it. I don't have a pile of cash to fall back on. Planning for the future is not really an option right now, and I live in Arizona, so monsoon season isn't the only reason why I feel gloomy when I step outside. Deep down, I know all I can do is keep moving forward. This is a model that has stuck with me through major changes in my life, and it's all because of the movie Meet the Robinsons. right around my middle school years. Meet the Robinsons was an inspiration because of the positive feeling I was left with after watching the movie. We weren't supposed to have what we got. This whole movie was supposed to have a completely different storyline closer to the children's picture book, A Day with Wilbur Robinson, which coincidentally was the original title of the movie. The book was about a boy who meets a weird family and helps his best friend's grandpa find his missing false teeth while being introduced to his wacky family members along the way. Uh, sound familiar? Steven Anderson, the director, took this simple idea and applied it to his own life. He was also an orphan, and growing up, he had similar questions to what we see Lewis ask throughout the movie. Thank you so much for uh, joining us here today. And now just on a personal note, I know that this movie is kind of close to your heart because the lead character is an orphan who's looking for a family. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was adopted when I was very young. Uh, I wasn't in an orphanage like Lewis, but we both asked the same questions about our past. Where did I come from? Who is my birth mother? Why did she give me up? So that was the thing that immediately glued me to this project. And I was very, feel very fortunate to have been able to tell a personal story like this. Bye. Because while Disney Animation Studios acquired Pixar, this meant every movie release had to be a hit, and John Lasseter wasn't about to take any chances. The New York Times wrote an article about John Lasseter back in 2007 and talked about how he was the first filmmaker to run Disney's animation operations since Walt Disney died in 1966, saying that he wanted to reclaim the studio's golden era, which he did. While he was in charge, we got movies like Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, and Meet the Robinsons. After the acquisition, he had walked into an almost completed film and told the director, Steven Anderson, to change over half of the movie, make the villain scarier. Oh, and after a dinosaur chase scene somewhere, this needed to be a cash cow. It was released in over 600 theaters that were equipped with real D cinema. Disney 3D was the way of the future, and what better way to show it off than with a movie about a boy who invented the future. John Lasseter was a big reason why we got so many hits, but he's also known for grabbing, kissing, and making comments about physical attributes towards the women that has worked with him over the years. So don't think of him as some sort of savior. Disney did not produce Meet the Robinsons to make young kids feel better about themselves. It just so happened to have touched me and many other people with its overall messaging and storyline. 2020 has been a garbage year, and even in my late 20s, I'm able to put on Meet the Robinsons, and in just 96 minutes, I feel a little bit better with my position in the world. I cannot comment on anyone else's experience but my own, as I am very fortunate in the fact that I have been able to keep working during this COVID-19 mess and I still have a roof over my head. But Meet the Robinsons is a wholesome movie and it just makes me feel good. I've always been deeply affected by the movies I watch and it's because I give myself to the story being told. Time travel exists? Okay. Hats are evil? Okay. There's a super genius kid who changes the world for the better? Yep, I'll buy that too. I love to give myself over to a movie and be completely engrossed in its story. I experience my feelings really strongly, and I will actually cry for movie thing makes you me too happy. Me. If too I'm sad. not between a three and a seven on the emotional scale, I'm crying. You're crying if it's too sad. I'm crying if I'm too, too happy. Always. So between three and seven is you're fine. It's a good zone. Never has there been a truer statement because that's me. This year has been a test and I'm filled with contradicting emotions, but find comfort in my own way. Movies like Meet the Robinsons give me the boost that I need in this COVID-19 atmosphere. Keep moving forward. 
I hadn't always been so moved by this motto because one of the biggest ways I feel a connection towards Mitha Robinson's was the idea of time travel and being able to see a parent at the same age as you. Wilbur is Lewis's son from the future, and I love thinking about having that same opportunity, but with my dad. I love picturing my dad's past as he had to have been one of those 1980 metalheads raging against the man. Would it be cringy? Would we be friends? I have so much curiosity about who my dad was as a young man because I only ever have known him as a dad. He wears socks with his sandals and he talks way too loud when he gets excited. But the older I get, I've actually been able to see him more as a human being than just my dad. Because I have so many emotions and I feel movies too hard, I am usually able to find ways to either empathize with what I'm watching or find a way to relate it to me. So yeah, I'm not a boy genius, but I was able to find a connection and I'm sure there are others who can do the same. Movies like this really mean a lot to me because the messaging is so encouraging to a younger audience that I think about how it has helped and shaped me. This only makes me hope that this could potentially be beneficial to someone else out there because I really can't be the only one who feels this way. It doesn't matter that the animation feels old or that there have been some shady people involved in the movie. If it can help anyone else out there help sort through their emotions and give them the courage to keep moving forward, isn't that all that matters at the end of the day? All we can ever do is understand our failures and grow from them. Okay, that should do it. It's so exciting. Let her rip, Lewis. Quickly. Uncle Joe can't hold on much longer. Everybody ready? Go, Carl. Yeah. Oh, no. No. I didn't know. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You failed. And it was awesome. Exceptional. Outstanding. Uh, I did better. From failing, you learn. From success, not so much. If I gave up every time I failed, I never would have made the meatball cannon. I never would have made my fireproof pants. Ah, uh, still working out the kinks. Being in the middle of a pandemic across the world is very new to me. New to most of us. This might be the inspirational boost of happiness in this COVID-19 atmosphere that you've been looking for. Or you may already have a movie that boosts your spirits, similar to how I'm affected by Meet the Robinsons. And it's time to give it a rewatch.